Asus's flip camera smartphone is back. This time around, the company has decided to split the Zenfone into two separate devices. I spent the past seven days with the Zenfone 7 Pro, and here is Android Authority's review. Right at the start, we have to address the elephant in the room, which is the flip camera. We've seen motorized cameras before, but what makes this one particularly interesting is not the fact that it gives you an uninterrupted display, but it, it lets you use the main cameras, usually the higher quality ones, as the selfie shooters. Yes, you can shoot 8K video, but probably more interestingly is because the main and the telephoto cameras are optically stabilized on this thing, this could be a vlogger's dream smartphone. I took over 200 photos with the Zenfone 7 Pro during my review period. And going back through them, I really noticed just how much the colors and contrast shifted between all three cameras. The telephoto likes to wash things out and the main camera is comparatively oversaturated. The ultra wide's look is closer to the main than the telephoto though. Colors in general look okay, they're pretty vibrant and the overall look of the Zenfone 7 Pro's images are bright with plenty of contrast. When you give the phone plenty of light and a colorful subject, it shines and takes some pretty good images. Even when switching to night mode, which automatically kicks in below a certain light level, the phone takes decent photos. I recently visited the beach at 1am and I got some rather usable photos. Now, these were taken with the main camera. The ultra wide doesn't do such a good job, which makes sense given the smaller sensor and smaller aperture. Overall though, the night mode is actually pretty good. One big combined issue with the Zenfone 7 Pro's camera is noise reduction slash skin smoothing. What you'll probably notice quite quickly actually is that when the light drops just below daylight, artifacts begin to appear. In a couple of the shots taken at sunset, the camera takes a grassy moor and turns it into a mossy hill. And it's even worse with the telephoto. It did the same with this lake, turning it into a bit of an ice rink in this photo. It does a lot of smoothing that it really doesn't need to, and it continues when you flip the camera around to the front. My skin really doesn't look this smooth in person, and yes, this is with all the beauty mode stuff turned off. While we're here, portrait mode is okay. The camera app allows you to adjust the virtual aperture with a slider, which is cool. However, the phone struggles a bit with edge detection and there's pretty much no focus roll off, which means that in most photos, it looks like the subject is just photoshopped in. This goes for both humans and energy drink bottles. The Zenfone 7 Pro does have a couple of cool party tricks though. Motion tracking will use the camera's motor to keep a locked subject in frame. It only really works in one direction due to the orientation of the motor, but there we are. And also thanks to that motor, the camera can do automatic panoramas, which means that you don't have to move when you're taking the panorama, which is pretty neat. It'll also shoot Ultra HD video 4K at 120 FPS continuous, which is definitely fun to play with and probably more practical than the other party tricks. The overall camera experience, however, isn't quite there. It's not as polished as it should be competing in this price bracket. There's good foundations there and the night mode is great and given enough light, the camera can take good photos as decent hardware there. It just needs to build on that foundation and really nail the bits that are important. Moving back to the rest of the phone, it feels like a next generation Zenfone 6, which makes sense because it is. Unfortunately, the flip camera means no IP rating on this one, but it feels solidly made, and since ASUS provides two different cases in the box, there's not really an excuse for you to break it. It's not the prettiest phone out there though, it's definitely thick with two Cs, maybe even three Cs, and unfortunately, the haptics feel hollow and weak. Haptics are important, ASUS. I expect more next year. And the phone being 230 grams means that it's gonna take a real presence in your pocket. The heft isn't for nothing though, on top of that flip camera mechanism, there's a massive 5,000 mAh battery inside, a Snapdragon 865 Plus, 8GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, and on the outside, of course, that 6.67 inch 90Hz Full HD AMOLED panel. I have to admit, I played a lot of Project Offroad 2 on this thing, and even after some 30 minute stints, the phone didn't get that hot. Of course, the performance was never going to be an issue with this phone. Why should it have been? It's got a top shelf chip with plenty of RAM. Combine that with a large battery, the Zenfone 7 Pro is a competent gaming phone, just like its ROG 3 cousin. That big uninterrupted 90Hz AMOLED plays into this too. I found that I got really immersed in Project Off-Road 2 thanks to not having any cutouts or distractions on the screen. Of course, this carries over when watching content on YouTube and Netflix, especially when you pinch the fill. 
Unfortunately, the speakers on this thing really aren't that great. The earpiece is amplified to give you a stereo effect, which works quite well. And actually, the system does get quite loud, but there's not a lot of depth to it. There's not a lot of bass whatsoever, and so it's hard to get immersed in the sound. And since Asus removed the headphone port for this generation, you're either relying on Bluetooth audio or an adapter. Someone asked in the comments in the last video if this thing supports HDMI. Unfortunately, with my adapters, I was not able to get USB-C to HDMI working. This could be an adapter thing, but I wanted to test it for you guys anyway. That bottom USB-C port is flanked by the bottom speaker and notification LED. Love to see this. Thank you, Asus. There's support for dual SIM and micro SD simultaneously, as well as the 2020 standard 5G in both millimeter wave and sub six, as well as Wi-Fi six built in. Zen UI 7 based on Android 10 is very smooth and very clean. It feels very light in terms of a skin, but it does have a few extra features and tweaks that make it awesome. By the way, this background is called Rainbow Road on the Backdrops app. If you swipe in from the left hand side when you're playing a game, you bring up Game Genie, a game tool that Asus has ported over from its gaming phone. It allows you to disable alerts, lock the screen brightness, adjust refresh rate and set macros. From here, you can also live stream and record footage. It's not going to be for everyone, but you can really see Asus's gaming expertise coming through here in a feature that's hidden if you don't need it and comes up when you want it. The previous generation's smart key has been brought back, but built into the power button this time around. You can change it for a double press and a hold. I left hold for powering off the device, but I also changed the double press to open the camera app quickly. This is all customizable within Asus's settings though. I've mentioned the 5,000 mAh battery in this video once already. It's a big battery. What that translates to is some pretty impressive battery life. I've been getting a day, a day and a half, maybe two days of usage with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Granted, I am by no means a power user and when I was really testing the phone, it would last me just about a full day. However, that means that whether you're a mobile gamer or you're like me and you use your phone a little bit lighter, you're going to get fantastic battery life out of this thing. Asus's bundled in 30 watt charging brick isn't the fastest in the world. It's definitely not gonna get you that 100% in less than half an hour. However, charging the 5,000 mAh battery in about an hour and a half is pretty useful. Unfortunately though, there isn't any wireless charging in this device, which is a shame given the price point. So a phone that's good in most areas and particularly great at selfie video, battery life and performance. The price of all this? 799 euros, which puts it right around in between the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. It also roughly sits where the Galaxy S20 Plus is. This is some pretty stiff competition at this price point. However, at this point, we have to consider the Zenfone 7 Pro has the latest chipset and the biggest battery and has that flip camera mechanism, but it does put it in a very niche section of the market. See, in this price range, if you want a great camera, you're probably going to wait for the Pixel 5 or you're going to buy a Galaxy S20 Plus. So buying an Asus doesn't make sense for that. But if you really particularly want a good front facing camera in terms of video and a really long lasting battery, this is quite a good smartphone. But I'm going to pivot this a bit. I think that this would be a brilliant vloggers smartphone because you have as standard, 256 gigabytes of storage, plenty of space. You have Wi-Fi 6 for easy uploading. You have a 5,000 mAh power battery, which lasts you a long time. And you have those three cameras on the front. You can shoot 8K, 4K, whatever you want. And because it's a smartphone, you have over a 6.5 inch viewfinder right on the front there. Let us know in the comments if you'd use this thing for vlogging. The Zenfone 7 Pro as a whole is a solid smartphone, but it's for a niche set of users. At the end of the day, the flip camera mechanism is the only real thing you're gonna buy this smartphone for. And props to Asus for sticking their necks out and doing something different. It certainly defies ordinary. Anyway guys, that just about covers our review of the Zenfone 7 Pro. Please do leave uh, your comments in the comment section. Ask us about the phone. Let us know what you think about this thing. Do you think it's a vlogger's dream smartphone or do you think it's intended for completely different users? Let us know. Please do hit like and subscribe to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Authority and I'll catch you later.